Today, Arabia is a brutal desert, not dissimilar to how it would have been at the time of this potential crossing. Temperatures in the heart of the Arabian desert reach 50 degrees Celsius. It's one of the hottest places on the planet. Did our ancestors really manage to survive in this place? It sounds unlikely. But Dr. Jeff Rose is not one to be put off by a challenge. Even the challenge of finding evidence in such a forbidding place. He's one of just a few archaeologists to search for clues to our ancient past in this region. And he believes that this dead place was once alive with our ancestors. To test his claims, we took him on a route through the Arabian desert, which he had never seen before, and asked him if he could find any signs of ancient life. It's actually quite a special location. If you look around, you see all these black rocks that are lying across the surface. Well, they're not really rocks. They're all ancient stone tools made by early humans. Well, I've picked up a few just, just lying on the surface here. And these are called cores. So these are the pebbles they would have held in this hand. They would have had a harder stone in this hand, and they would have knocked flakes off of, off of this, which would have then, then been turned into tools. And these particular cores are called blade cores. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very specific technology where they're trying to remove these long, thin blanks, which would then be turned into scrapers or arrowheads or something like that. And this is, this is a particularly interesting one because we can see they've, they've removed flakes here and here, and then they got themselves into trouble. They hit it here. They didn't hit it quite hard enough, and you get what's called a hinge fracture running along this edge here. And it's a mistake. So they probably just said, eh, and threw it over the side and picked up another piece and tried again. It's everywhere in Arabia. And that's why they litter the ground. This place was a stone tool factory. This and, and the entire plateau that goes on for hundreds of kilometers to both the east and the west would have been a special place because this raw material is everywhere. Raw material would have been as important to them as oil is to us today. They absolutely needed it to survive, to make their tools, to, to, to hunt, to, to fish, to, to skin hides, to make clothing, to make structures, to get shelter from the sun. So it was absolutely essential. But who were the people who left these tools? Could they really be anything to do with the crossing of the Red Sea around 70,000 years ago? Everything is lying on the surface, and surface sites can't really be dated using traditional methods. However, we can say, based on the technology that we see here, this, this very specific blade technology, and there's a site dated in Yemen to about 70,000 years ago with the identical technology, and then another site, which we have found over just over those mountains, dated to about 12,000 years ago. So we can put it somewhere in that range, between 70,000 and 12,000 years ago. But how could anyone have survived in this parched landscape? Jeff believes the answer could lie a few miles from the stone tool factory. Within a short distance, the desert undergoes a remarkable transformation. Apart from the camels, it's hard to believe that this is still Arabia. This is the fertile Wadi Darbat, in the Zufar Mountains of Oman. It sits on the edge of a very active weather system, which forms out in the Indian Ocean. The system's defining feature is the monsoon which blows in every summer. And 
With it comes the rain, which makes this place so lush and green. This simple accident of climate is absolutely key to our human journey because it may have allowed our ancestors to establish a crucial foothold in this otherwise inhospitable new world. As an oasis in the middle of the desert, this may have been a refuge for some of our ancestors through the worst of the driest climate phases. But on either side of this refuge, the desert still stretched for hundreds of miles. So how did these pioneers manage to move on through Arabia? way, our ancestors must have found a source of water, not only in Wadi Darbat, but further east. The clue to how they did it may lie not in the Arabian desert, but under the waves of the Indian Ocean, because below this boat is a hidden source of fresh water. 70,000 years ago, the Arabian coastline looked very different to today. When our ancestors first saw it, sea levels were lower, and what is now sea was then land. Crucially, the coast was dotted with springs of fresh water. So if our ancestors came this way, they could have found a lifeline. A fertile land of freshwater lakes and rivers leading to what is today the Persian Gulf. The Persian Gulf was probably one of the most important places in the ancient world because it's the shallowest inland sea in the world. So it's only about 40 meters deep. So when that sea level was lower, the entire area was this exposed floodplain and all those drainage systems around Arabia that are coming from the Zagros Mountains, the Tauros Mountains, trapped beneath Arabia itself, flow into the Gulf and they come bubbling up on the surface. So in ancient times you have lakes, estuaries, freshwater rivers, and only when the sea level was lower would it have been available. So it really shows why that coastline was so important for the early humans moving out of Africa. The springs of fresh water along the coast of Arabia could have provided those early pioneers with water. The sea offered food, and the desert gave them tools to survive the great journey to the Persian Gulf. And there's one final clue to how significant this place could be. When an early civilization grew up in this region, its people gave a name to the type of landscape they lived in. It was everything, it was paradise. In fact, the name for it by the people living along the northern shoreline was Eden. It may be a coincidence that this is the same word used in the Bible for an earthly paradise. But it may well have been that from this Eden, humans gradually spread out in all directions, eventually to Europe, Australia, Asia, and the Americas. When and how did they make these journeys? And how did the experience transform our ancestors and make us into the people we are today? These are the questions we'll seek to answer in the human journey.